everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we will be discussing about the last problem of today's bi-weekly contest subarray with elements greater than varying threshold so you are given an integer array nums and an integer threshold you need to find out a value k for which this particular condition holds true the condition is if there is a subarray that exists of length k such that every element in that subarray has value greater than threshold by k. So let's just take an example. Like you need to just return any such value k. Now let's just take an example. Let's say the array is 65658 and threshold is 7. So for k equals to 1, let's say the, you, find, you are trying to find out whether k equals to 1 is valid or not. So what you need to find is whether there is a subarray that is of length 1 such that every element in the subarray is greater than 7 by 1 which is 7 so yes there is a subarray which has length 1 and every element in this subarray is greater than 7 so k equals to 1 is a valid output now let's just try k equals to 2 so for k equals to 2 what you need to find is whether there is a subarray of length 2 such that every element of the subarray is greater than 7 by 2 which is 3.5 so yes there is a subarray of length 2 6 comma 5 which has every element greater than 3.5 uh, right so k equals to 1 k equals to 2 both are valid here so you can return either to 1 or 2 so hope problem statement makes sense now how to solve it so first of all just uh, look at the constraint the size of the array is 10 to the power 5 so you actually can't do like can't check every possible k the like k equals to 1 k equals to 2 k equals to 3 because that would be that would lead to order, order n square solution which would not fit in the time complexity now uh, we have already uh, see that brute force didn't work now what next should come in mind like we are trying k equals to 1 k equals to 2 k equals to 3 right so why not do a binary search let's see if we can apply binary search or not so like just to re remind you like where binary search is applicable let's say you are at index i so if you are able to determine like with the output of index i if you can surely say that either elements of the left side would not need to be checked or elements of the right side would not need to be checked then you can apply binary search so let's see if that condition holds in this particular case or not so if let's say you are at i okay uh, let's say i equals to 3 or like i is nothing but k so let's say k equals to 3 okay so k equals to 3 holds true now if k equals to 3 holds true like you don't need to do anything else like just return k from the answer because we need one but one possible k so just return 3 from the answer but if 3 doesn't holds true then can you skip left or the right part let's see so 3 doesn't hold true what does it mean it means that there is no subarray of length 3 such that every element in this subarray is greater than threshold by 3 okay now with this statement can you justify that there will be no subarray of length 2 which have value greater than t by 2 or can you justify that there is no such subarray of length 4 which have value greater than t by 4 you can think you will not be able to justify either of these statements okay and because you are not able to justify either of this statement binary search is not applicable here so now what we know that is brute force is not applicable here similarly binary search is not applicable here now what to do as always let's try to simulate the problem and let's see if we can get out get something out from it so well, let's try from starting k equals to 1 so what would be the threshold if k equals to 1 15 by 1 right which is 15 so we can consider every element which are greater than 15 so there is no element which are greater than 15 hence there is no such subarray of length 1 hence k equals to 1 is not true now let's try k equals to 2 which is 15 like the threshold is 15 by 2 which is 7.5 okay so we like there is one element which are greater than which is greater than 7.5 so let's just activate it like by basically we can consider this element now whether there is a subarray with length 2 
with all the elements activated there is no right so we can't like k equals to 2 is also not valid now let's see k equals to 3 so what will be the new threshold 15 by 3 which is 5 so we can activate every element which are greater than 5 so this will be activated this will be activated this will be activated now notice that we haven't deactivated it because whatever was activated previously will remain activated throughout the reason being you are incrementing k so this value is incrementing so the actual threshold is decrementing so if a element or an index is activated at previous value it means it is already greater than 7.5 so it will be greater than 5 or any of the values that will come after this because that will be smaller than 7.5 so that's why 8 is not deactivated 8 will remain activated so when so what this states this states that if we activate an element we will never deactivate it so hope this statement is uh, important because this is leading to a linear time solution like we can see that because we will activate every element only once but yet we don't know the solution let's just move forward uh, now k equals to 4 so for k equals to 4 what will be the new threshold 15 by 4 which will be somewhere around 3 point something so we can activate everything that is greater than 3 point something which is we can activate these three so now we have a subarray of length 4 which is actually like there are several subarray of length 4 which have all the elements activated so this is valid now the k equals to 4 is valid now let's just think what actually we have done so we have formed some like with every activation there is some groups that are forming so 6 is a group 6 is a group that is formed again this 6 is a group that is formed and this 8 is a group that is formed now once we activate 4 there will be a new group of size 2 now once we activate 5 there will be a new group of size 4 now once we activate this 5 as well there will be a new group of size 6 so i like hope you see what we are doing we are actually with every activation there is a some merging of groups that is happening that's it now at the end if there is a group which has size greater than k then that particular k is valid so here we are seeing that there is a group of size 6 right the maximum size of group is 6 and 6 is greater than k hence k equals to 4 is valid so hope you see how we are like getting this solution so what we need actually is a data structure that can actually merge two groups okay and also give the size of a group efficiently basically we need the maximum size of a group okay so there is a very standard data structure called dsu disjoint set union that actually does this that form like that manages certain groups we will start with like every will every index will be a part of its own group we will start with n number of groups and as and when we are activating elements let's say we are we have activated this element so we will see that whether this element is activated or not if it is activated we can merge this element into this group and we can see if this element is also activated or not if it is we can merge this element in this group so by doing this after every merging we can just check whether what is the maximum size of the group and just see if it is greater than k or not so the pseudo code is simple uh, what we are doing is we are trying every possible k starting from 1 to n now every time we are doing something we are uh, like updating our threshold value like this threshold will keep on decreasing with the increasing k because k is in the divisor now what we need to find for every index which have value greater than this active threshold let's say this index is i we will activate the index i and we will check whether i minus 1 is activated or not and if i minus 1 is also activated we can merge i and i minus 1 and similarly we will check whether i plus 1 is activated or not if it is we can merge i and i plus 1 now after doing all this for every indexes of current threshold value we can check what is the maximum group size if group size is greater than k we will return k otherwise we will continue with the next k 
and if everything is exhausted we will return minus 1 there is no such k exist that ha that can make that condition true so this merging part is something that is that will be happening through dsu and this maximum group size is something that will be happening through dsu so rest algorithm is very simple hope you understand what's going on here let's just quickly look at the code uh, this is the dsu part of the code let's just uh, hide it for a moment now what we are doing is just to just one more thing we need to find out all the indexes which are greater than active threshold right so there are several possible ways to do that one possible way is just to sort the array and just maintain the indexes of the array as well let's say array is 1567 you can just sort the array 7651 and just maintain the indexes 7 is index 4 6 is index 3 index 2 and index 1 now let's say you want to find out threshold is 5 so everything until here is valid so you will just uh, and now let's say threshold may like decrease to 1 so this is also now valid so you will you will you will know that you have to activate index 1 so this is one possible way there are multiple possible ways to find this particular thing Uh, it's up to you how to do it how to do that in this part, like in this particular solution what i have done is just uh, what i discussed i just sort the array with indexes in mind so i just prepared a array which have value and indexes i just sort that particular array so everything is sorted now i am traversing from the maximum to the minimum now this active will denote whether this particular index is activated or not so initially k equals to 1 now we have found we are finding k threshold uh, which is threshold by k and we are checking what all elements to activate so this is what it is checking like which all elements to activate so this index is something that we need to activate so we activated the index we check whether index minus 1 is activated or not if it is we just merge index and index minus 1 if it is if we will again check whether index plus 1 is activated or not if it is we will just merge index and index plus 1 and finally after everything is done we can just check whether the maximum group size is greater than equals to k or not if it is we can just return k otherwise we will increment k and move forward and after this entire loop is done we will just return minus 1 so there is one more thing j less than n minus 1 this condition actually states that there is at least one active element because if there is no active element there is no sense of uh, uh, like a valid answer so if that particular case not valid at all so this basically uh, is the, is here just to handle the scenario of k equals to 1 um, so the dsu part let's just do it quickly so this is very standard dsu everything is is own parent so parent of j is j basically there is everything is in its separate group and everything has size 1 now while merging what we are doing is we are just merging their leaders so leader of x and y we have found out and we see like we just merge this to leader and after merging we will like notice that when merging we will increment the size as well so after this entire thing is merged we are maintaining an array like an integer max we'll just take the max of the updated size so that will give you give us the entire max so hope this entire solution makes sense if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below i will be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do share with your friends so that they can also get benefited thank you